according to my clock up there. My train clock is letting me know with a whistle. We are at four o'clock. So let's get the show on the road. My name is Scott Hampton. I'm living by Celia, California. I'm about 15 miles west of Sequoia National Park between Bakersfield and Fresno. If anybody is familiar with California at all. So that's why it's warm here, man. In the summer, it gets to 110 degrees on a regular basis. So 89 is a pretty nice day. So today, enough about me. I am going to be building a birdhouse for you. And let's get a better close-up view of that with a finial on the bottom. These are always fun to make. I thought, well, sometimes I make them for Christmas, but then in springtime, it's a good time for making birdhouses. People like to collect these things. So what I've got here in my headstock is actually just a two inch diameter dowel, poplar dowel from the hardware store of all places. It's easy to work and it's a nice light wood. It, it doesn't gray up as far as I know. I've made these birdhouses for years and I have yet to see the wood turn gray or get all streaky or anything, so that's a nice wood to do. And also if you want to dye it, you know, nice white colored wood like this, if you want to put like a, a vivid blue or red, really makes it pop out really well. So first thing I want to do is I'm just going to grab me a small, turn on my lathe, that would help. All right, I'm just going to true this up real quick with a small roughing gouge. So one inch, and I'm just going to turn this puppy up a little bit. I'm um, about 2,200 2, RPMs if anybody's interested in that kind of thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start back from the edge. You don't want to come in from the, the edge here and come in because you can blow this thing right out of the chuck or get a bad catch if any, in any case. So you want to start on the inside and work your way towards the tailstock end here. These are just roughing cuts real quick. I'm just trying to get it nice and balanced here. Smooth those cuts out a little bit. Doesn't all right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab me a badan and let's see how she does here. I've got two of them. See how she does. If you use a badan instead of a parting tool for this, you'll get less tear out on the front. If you use the badan, what I call upside down. Here in the States, we tend to use it upwards, but in Europe, they tend to use it this way. And the difference is, when you have it facing up like this, it's scraping. This way, with the bevel facing upwards, it's cutting the wood, which is great for these kind of cuts. Oh, it might not be sharp enough. Yeah, she's not sharp enough. Uh, I thought it would be. See, it's come, making my piece come out of my chuck there. So let's... Get that back in there nice and tight. Right. And I'm just gonna true that up again real quick. Get it balanced. You can see it's all all whacked out. Still sounds a little loose, so I'm going to check that. Chuck wasn't in there tight. That's what the problem was. All right. I found that my the, my threads on this insert on this particular chuck are getting kind of worn. I think because it's not really tightening up against my on my spindle on my headstock as much as it should. So I got to give it a really hard twist sometimes to get it on there tight. So I'm just going to grab me a normal parting tool here and just finish cleaning this up.
The reason why I want to turn it with a flat top is I'm going to drill this out to hollow out the inside. So before I drill it, I want to put a little divot here for the drill bit to follow so it doesn't start wandering once it hits the wood. I'm move my tool rest out of the way. I'm going to bring my drill bit up. This is a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit. And I'm just going to walk this right into here until I got that tape. And I do believe it's only about an inch and a quarter. So I don't want to go all the way in. Oops. Back that out. Doesn't seem tight enough. Got a drill bit that wants to spin on me. There we go. Trying to keep an eye on the chat at the same time. And the shavings seem to be coming out pretty well, so I don't need to really back it out any. All right. So let's bring that out. And then I'm going to take this drill tuck out of the tell center here. I don't need it to jab me in the elbow later on. So the next thing I want to do is I want to drill two holes, one for the opening and one for the little perch that the bird will sit on. So I average, I usually do it by eye, but this is a demo, so I don't want to go too far down. So I'm about 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch, yeah. more of a half inch, 15 millimeters down from the top. And I need to lock the tail stock here, that out of the way. All right, let's try that again. I'm just going to eyeball it. It's about the same spot there. It might be going in reverse. This drill bit does not cut it too strong here. There it goes. I think this one needs a little sharpening. All right, so I got that done. My lock to my spindle came out. So now what I need to do is just change drill bits. Any questions? It looks like it. It's being very, very nice and friendly online, and that's a good thing. And I just need to put a smaller drill bit in here that matches the size of the dowel I'll be using for the perch. And I want to do it off center, so I'm just going to offset it a little bit so when I glue the bird on there, he's not covering the little opening there. So. Now when it comes to drilling the holes, you can do it after you drill the inside or you can do it beforehand, doesn't really matter. So we're done with that part. So now we can start shaping the outside here. I tend to not really sh do any hollowing on the inside. The drill bit does a pretty good job of that. And because it's gonna have a roof on it and such, you really don't need to worry about the inside too much. I'm just gonna to touch it up just a, a tad with some sandpaper on the inside. Grab me some 180. Just so in case somebody gets nosy and wants to look on the, in the inside there and make sure it's nice and smooth like somebody worked on it. Need to leave any drill marks in there. Yeah, that's good. We'll clean that. Oh, there it goes. Clean those up bit later. So now let's shape the outside. And another reason why I use the one and a quarter inch Forstner bit is because I will reverse turn this using pin jaws in my talon chuck. And 
and using one and a quarter inch, I know it'll always fit. Let's just turn this up a little bit here. Grab the lower my tool rest a little bit. It's a little high. Any questions? Don't look like it. So I'm just gonna rough start rough turning this into the shape I want, and when we reverse turn it, we'll finish the bottom half. And we just want to keep taking this down a little bit at a time. And I just eyeball this. Whatever looks the length and the shape looks, that's what I go for. Now another tip why I use that quarter inch portion bit to drill it out is because when I make the roofs, I can do like a production run of the roofs. And when I make the tendon on the bottom of the roof, I just make sure they're all one and a quarter inches. And it'll allow me to make a whole bunch of roofs at once. At once. I don't have to keep going back and forth between birdhouses and roof making. Go a little bit thinner up here. Now what you want to do is you want to stop and make sure you're not going too thin. So we still got a little bit of meat left in there. That's another nice thing about having that hole. You can see how thin you're getting your birdhouse here. So we just want to make sure this takes some of this top down. We don't need to, we don't want it two inches in diameter. We want to cut it back down. This is just all done with this one, one inch roughing gouge. All right, so I'm gonna grab me a, a spindle gouge here. Where are you? And I'm just gonna use this to clean this up. I'm just going to start in the middle and just work my way towards the top of the birdhouse. Do some smooth cutting here. And we've got a little bit of a hump here. So I'm going to come all the way back here, start riding the bevel, and then start to cut. You don't want to start your, if you've got a like, small bump, in your piece you don't want to start right where that bump is you want to have the cut start coming into it so you get a nice flow with the piece still still see a slight bump there so i'm going to come right back in here adjust that shape a little bit and i'm going to come back in this direction here sort of like making a cove on a spindle And this, the hardest part is getting that center area of the cove nice and flush with the up and down of the bottom and the top of the cuts here. And we'll have a look, see here. See, okay, we are thin enough. So I'm just gonna grab that piece of sandpaper real quick. And I'm just gonna smooth it over real fast. Get rid of any full marks really quick. I'm not going to go into the finished part of the finishing of this piece. We are limited on time. All right, we pretty much got that done. Got any questions so far? Please put them in the in the chat while I reverse this to match the put on the other chuck with the pin jaws on it. Not yet. Glad to see so many people here, though. This is my fourth time participating in this craft festival. I did one, well, a year and a half ago, and then I did another one last November, and this would be my third one in a row since then. And I hope to keep coming in and treating you guys with a different project every couple of months. So 
So this will slip right on to those pin jaws just like that. You don't want to go too tight because it is a little thin. You don't want to hear any cracking. Uh, what I should have done is I should have parted this off before I did this. So give me a second. Uh, this only take a second. Need to change the. I need to put it back on there. I meant to part it off. It happens. You get in a rush, watching the clock. Sometimes this happens. So we're just gonna match this up to the jaw lines I had before. Make sure it's gonna run true. And we pretty much got it on there so I can tighten it down. go. Maybe there was a step I was missing there. It happens. <laughs> All right, so we're going to leave a little extra on the bottom here so we can true it up, make it look nice, and get it set up for that finial we'll be making next. When using your parting tool, always widen the gap a little bit. Otherwise, you'll end up either binding in there, and at the very least, you'll end up burning the wood. And I'm going to take it just to where I can twist this puppy off, which is pretty thin. That wood is pretty resilient as far as not just wanting to fly off the lathe. Most of the time, see, it just popped off, left that little little nub in there. But that's all waste wood. So you don't need that. Now, if you don't have pin jaws, you can also use this waste wood and make yourself a little jam chuck for the birdhouse to jump jam onto. I just like the convenience of this of the pin jaws a little more. Can't make a jam chuck and because the hole's the same size you can always it should fit most of your birdhouses. <laughs> the faster I go the behind her I get. Yes sir. That's true. Make sure I don't crack it. Snug it up and up. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to bring my tail stock up first. Just a little bit of support before I get to the very bottom. That way, when you're shaping it, you don't have to worry about the birdhouse may be coming loose. Just a light touch, nothing major there. All right, just, I'm just using half that pin just to hold it in place. So I'm grabbing me a smaller spindle gouge. There's my glazer one here. And I'm gonna change out tool rest real quick. I'm gonna grab my smaller one here. I can fit it in between the centers. There we go. Don't need a really big full rest for this. You're in tight quarters. Just want to make sure you got it adjusted right. You're pretty much on center there. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of Was a little too small for this part, so I'm gonna grab me a, my larger one here. Detail gouge. The, that's a, a bevel cut at about 40 degrees. I'm just gonna kind of round over the bottom here.
get you as close as to the telstock as you can without touching it so, so you don't dull your tool. And we're just going to crisp that bottom here, that bottom line right there up a little bit. So we're just going to join these two. And I'm going to come back in here and just do a kind of a shear scrape here, clean up any bumps I might have there. All right, so now I can back up my tail stock. And I'm just going to make a flat part, a flat portion on there for the For the finial to rest on, so I'm going to grab me my larger spindle gouge. Well, there you are. And I'm just going to do a little push cut here. That's a little too high. There we go. You want to make sure you got a nice flat spot, otherwise, your finial is not going to rest evenly on the bottom of your birdhouse. Or you can even make it just a little bit concave if you want for for glue to rest in. And I'm gonna just check that with a straight edge. Make sure it's at least flat. So we got a flat bottom there. That's good. It's rocking just a little bit right there in the center, so I need to take a little bit out of that. Right in here. And then we need to drill a hole in the bottom for the finial to, the finial's tendon to rest into. So I'm gonna grab me my parting tool and make another divot like I did before with the other. And I did the top of the birdhouse. Are we on time? We're, we're good. We're only 20 minutes in. All right. My workbench seems like it. As I go, it gets smaller and smaller. So now what I need to do is drill out that hole for a tenon. Grab me my stash of drill bits here. This one will work just fine. I don't want it real big, it doesn't need to be. You want it big enough so it doesn't snap off when you're making when you get down to the when you're making that tenon. So let me grab my drill chuck and put it back on the tail stock. up there, this there, slide this back a little bit, this is a kind of a long drill bit, thought I loosened it up, okay, slide this in here, and one thing about drill bits, you don't want them bottom, actually bottoming out, in your drill chuck, what you want to do is touch the bottom and then pull it out a little bit so you get a truer hole that way. Because if you have it bottomed out, the bottom, the drill bit can actually pivot when you start to cut and create a, an out around hole. So we're going to turn the speed down to the proper about 400. And we'll just this is a, such a long drill bit. And whatever you feel comfortable until you get hit that hollow point, until you feel it pop through the hollow section of the birdhouse, you can pull the drill bit back out. And we'll get rid of this chuck, the drill chuck. All right, so we're gonna turn up the speed a little bit, just touch it with the sandpaper again. Get up any tool marks we might have. 
Uh, I should have probably changed the camera angle. See, I missed it again. Yeah, see, you guys can see the hole there. Yeah, it's probably a 3 8 size, I believe. That's what the drill bit I used was. I'm just cleaning up that tool mark on the top there where I matched the bevels, the cut to the earlier bevel there. All right, so we should be done with the birdhouse. So, next thing we want to do is create the roof. Make sure you don't turn your chuck the wrong way and crack this puppy in half. So, so here we got the the inside, you can see the hole from the, where the tenon will go. It doesn't need to be that deep or along of a tenon, but you know anything that's comfortable to make sure it's a solid joint. See where it's flattened on the bottom here and then nice curve into it. It's pretty light. That's what you want for an ornament. So now I'm gonna grab me a blank for a birdhouse roof. Okay, so that one's Short. I think it'll work. I want to use. A, I can use a nice piece of carob here that I've got. That would make a pretty roof. So I just need to change out my chuck one more time. Get rid of these pin jaws. And we'll grab those. That chuck with the number two one-way jaws in it. And because this the thread is it's not there we go. So I got a little bit of a enclosure on this one, so I need to make sure that's at the top so I can cut that away. And what you want to do is, you don't want to put your your wood in your jaws like that. It will pop out on you. It's not a very good grip because you're only holding it at four points. And the points are on a very sharp corner. What you want to do is bring it to where the, jaw, the jaws will be touching the, the sides. And then you've got eight points. And it's a flat area, so the grip is much better. And you also don't want to bottom the, the wood out in your jaws. You want to bring it out a little bit. Because if you do have a flat, if you push it against the flat, you can cause a pivot point, which can draw the, the piece out of your chuck while you're turning. So you just want to leave a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap, you can see. Right, right here. It's just almost touching the bottom, which is good. It looks really true that way also. And I need to change out my tool rests out. That's what I have in there. It's too small. All right, so this is a piece of carob. And some of the pieces are hard. I think it's carob. It might be a piece of burl. We'll find out when we get into it. This, the grain of this is really going to look nice. So let's hope it just does a really pretty job. Let's see here. I'll make sure I don't have any questions. If you got any questions, write them in the chat real quick. And while I get a drink, I'm drinking a piece of Pepsi or drinking some Pepsi. Mm. Pretty much my only vice almost. Anybody got any questions? I hope I didn't miss any in the chat as I've been going. I keep, once I get going, I sometimes just move, keep moving and moving. It doesn't look like there's any right now. So let's get back to the overhead camera there. And I'm going to grab me my larger 
roughing gouge to get this puppy down the round. A nice 32 millimeter Sorby. And give it a turn. Make sure your speed's down when you start the lathe. And just when I got talking, I just want to double check on the tightness of this here. Make sure I did tighten it up. There we go. So making the roofs goes pretty quick. You're just basically creating a taper from, the, from this end and then small at that end. So because this wood is kind of a little bit funky, I'm just going to take it a little easier on it. I do want to get it round first. I do any else, anything else. Play it good and balanced. Yeah, let's see how it looks there. All right, we got that round down to about there. Oh, a little bit of a square still right there. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep keep going a little bit down. The grain looks marvelous. I'm just making sure I get around down at this end so I know I'm, how deep I need to go for the rest of it. So now I can just match everything up. And that truck doesn't sound like it's seated again. Yeah. Yeah, it's in there. All right, so here we go. This wood is a little punky and dry. I just want to take it easy on this, and I'm just going to do a slight pill cut here. Move some of this squareness up towards the chuck. finish on that it's really gonna be nice I got a slight slight crack right there so I'm gonna grab me some super glue if I can get the top off there we go. and just gonna get it down in that little crack I don't want that coming loose Uh, it looks like I grabbed the medium, but it still should get down into that crack. Let's see if I got anything. Uh, a little bit of a hole there. We'll just seal that up. Same thing here. All right. And then I'm going to spray it with a little bit of accelerant. Get it going here. Yeah, it got down in that crack pretty well. Just any, man, it's a punky kind of wood, so I just want to make sure any cracks or something that's not going to cause me any problems. Yeah. A little bit more right there. Sometimes the cracks show once the wood is darkened up a little more. So this is the major crack, so I just want to double fill that. So this one, this one will probably get turned away some anyway, but I want to make sure. You don't need wood flying apart in my shop. All right. And it's turning the wood, the glue's turning white, but that's all right because that's all going to be cut away here in a minute. Make sure there's no questions here. All right, so here we go. So now I can start. Just brush shaping the, the piece. Now that I got it bounced out. I'll speed things up a little bit. Nice and gentle. So I'm gonna grab me my smaller roughing gouge. It seems to be cutting better than my large one. I think this one's 
So you want to move your tool rest to where it matches the line you're curving so you don't, don't have a whole lot of overhang. Yeah, that's cutting better. And while I make these this nice little taper, what I call a cone roof, I always start to cut a little bit further back each time. But you want to, don't want to take so much back that your tool stops because you're taking too much of a cut. You don't want to start all the way in the back and then try to cut it out in one go because you're going to have a big pile of a cut right there. It's going to cost you a big headache in the end. It costs you some catches and stuff. This would be taking too big of a cut. So I'm just going to check again for cracks. I think I probably got them. You can see where the, the glue soaked through still. So yeah, it sealed up the wood where I needed it to really well. So I'm going to start back in this area and I'm just going to start taking this down a little bit more. got a bite out of it. So nice little piece of that punky wood jumped out at me there. Oh man, I was afraid of that. Lost that roof. Oh, I got another piece here real quick that's going to be a lot faster and easier to cut. That one did not, unfortunately did not work well. So I'm gonna do, you got a piece of sugar maple here. This is pretty nice wood. And it cuts really fast. So I can cut through this really quick. And I don't need to be explaining a whole lot when I do it. All right, so I have that big. Unfortunately, there must have been a crack that went all the way through that lovely piece we were cutting just a second ago. And let's do this. All right, this is sugar pine. It's kind of like a, you see how fast and easy it cuts. And I think I'm gonna pull it out of the jaws just a little bit. Give me a larger roof, longer roof here. So I'm just gonna put it like about halfway into the jaws. It won't come out at all here because this is a very strong jaw. It really digs into the sugar pine here. Bummer that that piece came out. Broke in half, but we gotta keep moving. So now we need to do a couple of shear cuts here just to get this area round down. We'll see where we're at. All right, you can see all the pretty grain here. I get this wood out of my local mountains of the Sierra, out of the Sierra National Forest. Well, they have, they give you permits to take out any trees that you think. Uh, need to change to my smaller, smaller. Rough and gouge. That one's even a little too grabby and too big. They give you permits to take out the overgrown trees that are filling the forest up too much. This one came out pretty quick and fast. Uh, what I want to do is I want to put a little divot in here just for the hanger. I'm going to grab me my little uh, pin, 
pin drill here. And I'm just gonna put that in there real quick. In and out. And I'm just gonna grab me a nice little eye hook here. Zoom in on that one. Uh, come on, come on, Let's focus. Pull it back out a little bit. Oh well, I was hoping. There it is. You can see the little divot I put in there with the parting tool. I got me a silver eye hook here. And I'm just going to turn on the lathe real slow. Just screw that right on in there. You're all set. We've got that little eye hook. This stuff really cuts really smooth. I tend to not even have to, to sand it, which is great. It saves a step using this sugar pine. It cuts really smooth. It doesn't have a whole bunch of like sap and all that other kind of stuff you'd find in construction paper or construction type of pine. So now I need to get me my veneer calipers. It's this piece here. And I want to measure. I want to measure the inside here. Switch over to the overhead. I use this and just measure the opening here. Because we need to make that ten in the same size on here. Grab me my parting tool. A little too close to the jaws. That's why you start your lathe slow. And you want to start making your tendon further back in case you, the, in case your measurements are off and you make it a little too small. And you still have plenty of room to correct that problem. Stop the lathe because this is so close to the jaws I don't want to use the calipers while the lathe is running. Okay, I got some room to go. that stop and go stop and go all right we are just about on the right on top of it here now if it's a little loose that's okay it gives them room for let's yeah, see this slides right on over we got a nice fit so we're just going to clean this up now i want to undercut under undercut the roof a little bit with the parting tool so it seats nice on the on the top of the birdhouse and you don't have any weird flat spots showing. Yeah, 15 minutes, we can do it. These finials go really quick. I'm gonna grab me my Sandpaper and clean up that corner a little bit, round it over, make sure it's not all beat up, turn off the lathe. Okay, so we got a little bit of a tear out right there, but this just adds a little bit of a rustic feel to the birdhouse. So you don't want to sand those completely out. Alright, so I'm gonna make do something really quick here. I'm gonna add a little bit of a the texture to the roof using a Wagner type of texturing tool. Okay, we need to turn this puppy down a little bit. There we go. About 400. And we just stick that in here. Now, this does not cut the, the wood, it just impresses a pattern into the wood. So you gotta make sure you just go keep it going for a little bit, get that good pattern showing. And it's nice and deep into the wood. And we've got it there. 
Now, it doesn't look like much, but if you would apply a finish to it, there's my point tool I had. It must have fell. There you are. So this will highlight these, this texturing here. You just take this little point tool I've got and just stick it in there. Do this with a paper towel in fact so you want to turn up the way a little bit and it'll, this will take out all the fuzzies off of that little bit that's left behind by that texturing tool and there we have it we've got a nice little textured roof so now we want to get an imparting tool and part this off And we don't want to make the tenon really deep, or it might show up in the opening for the little bird to go in and, start, in and out of the, its house. Just enough to be able to glue it in there. All right, we don't need to part it all the way off. Just a little bit of a grab and twist. We've got that. We've got that. So we've got the body and the roof done. So now we're going to move over to making a finial real quick. Some of these things out of the way. Yep, 15 minutes. I can do it in 10. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. <laughs> All right, so then I put the bucket there. I need to change out my chuck again for my pin jaws. It's nice having extra chucks lying about so you don't have to change the jaws every time you need to switch back and forth. I've got three jaws. I got two one ways and a Big Mark 120. My large bowls here. So I've got a piece of walnut and cedar. I'm thinking I'm going to go with the cedar today. Famous last words. Same way, you want to put the have the flats here. You don't want it to bottom all the way out into the jaw, into the chuck. So you want to bring it out a little bit. There we go. Give it a good tightening down. All right. Trying to look for questions as I go. And I haven't really seen any, I don't think. All right, Carl's on his way out to get ready for his. Yeah, be sure to stay tuned for him. He's coming up in about 10 minutes. So the, the race is on here to get this done in time for Carl to start his. So I'm gonna just true this up, make it round. This type of cedar, it's a red cedar. Not the aromatic kind, but the turning kind. I buy these. It's a one inch blank I get from the craft supplies. It turns really, really nice. So I'm going to turn this because I'm going to turn this thin down a little bit using my roughing gouge. Just get rid of all this waste wood now faster than I can with a spindle gouge. Get a nice little cone thing going there. All right, grab my spindle gouge here. All right, so I'm gonna grab me a small detail gouge. I find it on my pile of piles here. All right, here we go. As you can see, this is cut way back. Hopefully, this one's sharpened. If not, I will know right away. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a like a acorn shape on the bottom here so I want to make a little bit of a little bit of a tiny little thing on the end I can see some of that wax from the end of the piece so I want to get rid of that there we go make it a little bit smaller I'm 
bring it up just like that. There we go. And now we just want to make a little bit of a tuck it in a little bit like that by twisting the tool. All right. So now we can create a curve on the top here. fix that real quick. I'm going to grab me a bigger spindle detail gouge there. Or maybe a smaller one since it was kind of grabby. So we can make this a little bit smaller just to adjust for that, that piece that jumped out there. And we can just tuck this back in again, just like this. What we want to do is we just want to make a cap for this. Want to make sure it's nice and tucked under that way. Clean that up a little bit. Now, thankfully, sandpaper does a wonderful job of cleaning any tool marks you might be leaving behind. larger spindle gouge here. Take that foot away. Nice and slow and easy. Come back this direction. And I'm going to take a look at that other birdhouse just to see what I did with it. Okay. It's got an onion shape. So we need to take a bunch of this wood down. Really quick. And we're just gonna create a flat right there for the onion. And I just wanna tuck this right under there, make a little bit of a detail right there. And then we're just going to cut that onion shape starting right there. How are we on time? Uh, seven minutes. Told you I'd get it done. I'm going to go a little bit thinner here. Smaller here. Make the onion a little bit smaller. So now we just want to make a like, nice little cove right here. So I went up too high while making the cove. That's why it jumped on me. So you just want to bring your tool down to the center and stop and then go the opposite direction. So now what we want to do is just make a little bit of a detail right there. We have a scraping right there. We don't have time to sand all this. So I'm just going to stop right there and grab my calipers. Oh, where did they go? Oh, I just, there they are. Measure the bottom of that birdhouse hole here. Just like this. And then we need to make that 10 in that same size. So I'm grabbing my parting tool. I should have a little more time to spin on this, but I don't. So I'm just going to measure this. You can cut this way down a little bit. It is too big. I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to measure that 10 in here. Eyeball it at first. You want a kind of a snug fit. Let me glue it in. Okay, we're almost there. So I'm going to remove a whole bunch of this. I'm going to make a flat point right there. Then I'm going to come in and just kind of under make an angle going towards there. So we want to measure that again. 
just about there. Uh, yeah, we got time. We're going to have a few minutes left over. Uh, I was hoping to show you guys how to glue it together, but I don't think we're going to have time for that. All right, so that is, came out just a little too small. And that's the size we need right there. So I got room to part it off. And I just want to grab my very small parting tool. It's got an angle cut on it. So I can just squeeze it down in there and clean this up so it's nice and flat, that tenon is. And now we can just almost part it all the way off. There we go. And we just give it a twist. And go switch over to my workbench. And I'm going to move this old fan out of the way here. Turn it off so it's not so loud. Some of this stuff. So we've got, we've got the body. We've got the roof. And we've got the finial that should there's a little sandy. Ah, it's a little too big. No, oh, I'll clean that up later. But we can clean that up and with a little sandpaper. It's just a tad too big. But you guys got the idea. Oh, there we go. Get in there. That would be it. All it would need is some gluing. And I would put a nice little size perch in there. And then. I would grab me a nice little bird using CA glue, and I would do that right on there just like that. And I'm not holding the finial up there. There we go. All I need is a little adjustment and a little gluing up, and you, there you go. You got yourselves a birdhouse. So <laughs> that was a quick hour, I'll tell you that. You got three minutes. I just want to thank everybody. This is my fourth time. I hope I can return again. I've got all kinds of crazy ideas. I can show you guys how to make all kinds of different projects. So, in fact, the next one I would like to do is a, a burn bowl. This highlighted, uh, like, green wax, gilding wax. Those are always fun to do. So, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys coming in and you got 62 views, it looked like, all through this. Everybody's starting to say bye-bye and head over to Carl's, which I strongly recommend you do. He always gives a good demonstration. I want to thank everybody involved with putting on today's event, all the presenters and all the back behind-the-scenes people. Really appreciate it. I hope I see you all again soon. Oh, I will be at the AAW Symposium this year. So if you see me, if you're going to be there, Say hi, I'm giving three demonstrations and I hope you can attend one of those classes. So we'll catch you all later. Have a good day. Bye bye.